everyone, I'm Hoff, and welcome to my DAISY standalone settings guide. Okay, first of all, here are my specifications, my hardware. Got a i7 4770K quad core processor with hyper threading, uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM running at 1866 speed. Got an uh, MSI GTX 780 Lightning graphics card. That's a three gigabyte card, and uh, I have DayZ installed on my Samsung uh, 120 gigabyte uh, boot drive SSD. Okay, so that's what I've got to work with. And the first setting to change is a power setting in the control panel. So hardware and sound, power options high performance, go into the plan settings, and go to advanced. Okay, get your high performance profile here, and then make your processor management, move it over here, minimum 100%, maximum 100%, and an active cooling policy. Okay, that'll help. Your system use uh, its resources to their full potential. Okay, and the next, uh, the next step is a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna go to uh, Daisy Properties in your, in your Steam library. And go to Set Launch Options. This is an advanced option. And I'll put each of these on the, on the screen. But you've got No, no Splash is for uh, taking away the Bohemia Splash uh, during loading and No Pause removes the, uh, the loading pause. Now, CPU count for a uh, quad core processor. Okay, max mem. Uh, I've seen a little bit of a discussion about this. Arma 2 could only utilize two gigabytes of RAM, but Daisy standalone uh, has recommended four gigabytes of RAM. So it should probably be able to use this four gigabytes here. So max mem four gigabytes. Max video RAM, uh, I've put it to three gigs. I'm hoping that it can chew on that, that it can use more than two gigabytes of uh, video card RAM. And then uh, X threads equals seven. Uh, it's the hyper, hyper threading for the, for the i7. Okay, that's done there. One more down. Next, we've got some actual DayZ settings. So go into documents. Find DayZ, open that up, and now it's always smart to make a copy of the config if you're going to be messing around with it on your and your profile as well, uh, which I have elsewhere. But go in and open up the DayZ config with Notepad. And this is the oldest one in the book. Used to do this with the mod with Arma 2 and everything. Uh, max frames ahead from the GPU. Change that setting to one, and detected frames ahead also to one. That's an oldie but a goodie save that one you're done with that uh, now you're gonna want to open your player profile go down to the bottom and look for scene complexity shadow Z distance all that scene complexity if you have a lower end system I'm gonna recommend going with a hundred thousand to a, a the highest 150 thousand uh, I've got a little bit more you know, ceiling to work with, so I have it set at 500,000. I like the way that the game looks when I can I can see a little farther, and I'm willing to sacrifice a couple of frames for that. Now, Shadow Z Distance, I have set at 100. I think the default is 250, so that's a nice, just little, give you a little bit of extra there, if you even choose to have Shadows enabled uh, at all. Okay, View Distance. Uh, I've seen a lot of recommendations, again, I think for, for people with, that struggle with the game and lower end systems, 1600 here and 1600 for the, for the preferred object view distance as well. Uh, I've had these as high as 5000 and, and 4000 for the object view distance, um, again, without uh, having anything explode. Okay, so there's that. And then a little trick, as you'll notice, I'm not saving it, and that's because if you go in change the attribute make the file a read only because daisy will uh if you don't make it read only it will overwrite that setting that you you just set um, mine seems to by default put the 
uh, scene complexity back up to a million every time if I, if I don't make the file read only. Okay. I think the rest is uh, in game. Here we are, fresh on the coast. Let's go over some of the. I know everybody and their brother has done a, a video settings video tutorial. Uh, I just like to give you a little bit of thoughts and uh, about why I choose the settings that I have. Um, rendering resolution. Uh, people that that need a little bit of performance, you can just completely turn that down to 75%, and it will scale up uh, that to to fit your your screen. Uh, which will give you a little bit of performance there. Um, textures, you know, obviously you can turn the detail down to very low. That will give you a few frames. Um, I found that texture filtering doesn't really uh, do much. So that one you could keep fairly high. It's not going to affect you too badly. Now, objects. Um, I actually like to keep, uh, I take that hit. I like to keep it at very high. Uh, that one, this one setting alone affects your frames per second more than any other setting uh, I've found in my experience. Um, going from very low to very high can cost uh, 15 to 20 frames, uh, I think, in my experience. So I keep that, uh, but I like to be able to see long distances, see long ranges, um, and at very high, buildings far away will, you'll still be able to like see into windows um, and things like that. I can't really demonstrate right here, but if there was a house that was enterable, like even up there, you can see it's struggling to kind of render in that, that house, and I'd be able to see in the window. If I turn it to very low, uh, there's absolutely no chance that I'd be able to see into a building uh, at this distance from here. So that's that, uh, and why I, I like to keep this by default at very high. Terrain, I like to keep it very low because, believe it or not, um, when you're looking far away, um, it's not going to render in all that ground cover as much as it would. So if there's, if there was a sniper up on that hill or something, um, at least this was true in the mod, you'd be able to see them slightly more easily. Um, I've heard, but I've not seen, that currently uh, at distance, like players' bodies will sink into the ground and make them a little bit obscured. Um, but I have no idea if that's, if that's true or not. So, because this turning terrain to very high doesn't really ch change all your, your frames per second all that much. It's just a... Uh, it's just a preference in that way for me. Okay, I, uh, I ran around for a long time uh, without clouds and without shadows. Um, I found that, you know, clouds are pretty cool. I, I've, I've since turned them on. It doesn't cost a whole lot in terms of frames. Uh, but if you're tight on a budget for frames, then, then again, I mean, you might want to consider disabling uh, clouds and disabling shadows. For me, shadows are either full on or full off. Um, I don't like, I mean, very low shadows, they look, they look really crappy. Um, far too straight lines and, and just terrible. So, uh, now, re now rendering, it's interesting, my MSI Lightning graphics card has LEDs that change color based on the, uh, the load being put on the, on the graphics card. And I've found that, even though you can't see it, but with my, uh, my FPS overlay, uh, changing anti-aliasing to normal or to very high. I mean, it, it, it was a difference of like 0.4 or 0.6 frames per second. Uh, nothing really even to speak of or, or not even noticeable. So I went ahead and cranked it to very high, uh, and that works for me. Uh, you just have to see what, how your, your, your card performs or how your, how your PC handles it uh, with the edge smoothing here. So Alpha 2 coverage, again, this is a, a gameplay choice. I I keep it disabled so that I can spot things better at a distance. Um, it makes the foliage look nicer. I mean, look at the fluffy trees and everything like that. But for spotting people laying under a bush and whatnot, um, I prefer to have it disabled. And then edge smoothing. Um, I 
I like it very high. I like the game to look pretty pretty nice. Um, FXAA or SMAA, either one. HDR, uh, very low. If you put it to low, I found it's like it's like one or two frames, uh, not a big deal. Okay, ambient occlusion. Um, I've seen no difference from this whatsoever, enabled or disabled. It has to do with so something with the lighting effect and 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 uh, trying to mimic uh, the way light behaves in real life and, 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 and whatnot. I don't use it. Post-process quality, that just makes everything fuzzy, gives it a little bit more of a realistic atmosphere. Uh, but I don't want hazy on the sides. I want nice and clear vision, so that's disabled as well. Bloom, rotation blur, no thank you. Okay. And really, that's it. I right, Just a little tip. Uh, about field of view if you're trying to see a, a distance uh, this is a third uh, first person only hardcore server so you know if I was just trying to make something out and you, know, you can always change your FOV uh, something a lot of people don't realize uh, in third person and all the, the regular servers if you're running around with your field of view totally wide um, and you're you got your little your dot here, which is where your gun would be pointing. Um, people think that that's like a red reticle, or, or you know that that's where their bullets are going. That's not true. When you change your field of view, it actually and they did this in armor as well. It warps where your gun is pointing. Uh, so never a good idea. Um, you know you'll see all kinds of people doing third person, you know M4 magazine dumping. Um, and sometimes not even hitting anything. It'll go through a whole 60 round mag. It's probably because of this kind of field of view stuff. They're, they're, they're warping their perspective and it, it's not gonna work well for you, okay? It's a little, uh, little idea there. And, uh, and that's it, that's, that's my settings. Um, real, real fast, just for fun. Here, let's go to, let's, oops, picked the wrong one. We'll crank everything. The game really actually does look amazing. These clouds going. That's already done. Rendering, let's go. Pretty trees. Ambient occlusion and post-processing. A little bit of bloom. This actually doesn't completely murder my computer it's uh it's not the most smooth thing in the entire world it probably wouldn't work very well in the city at all but this is what uh, daisy looks like if i could have set my i've done it before where i've had my settings to that that 1.5 million uh scene complexity and you can see a lot further but still pretty neat game looks beautiful uh, hopefully in the future with a little bit of optimization we'll be able a lot of people will be able to get close to this kind of uh, settings but yeah there you have it hope you enjoyed the video guys I hope that helped see you next time